It, is there a situation or an event that you view um, that could potentially lead to the uh, collapse of Bitcoin? Have you guys thought about what? So, let's putting it differently, I was going to ask that question. If it's 10 years from now and Bitcoin has failed, yeah, what, what caused it to fail? You know, when I, when I started searching around and I discovered Bitcoin, I thought, okay, well, this is crypto gold, but it's got none of the defects of gold. It's got, it's got all the attributes of a big tech monopoly. It's, it's, it's better money than any economist has ever conceptualized in the history of the world. So I thought, this is kind of perfect money. It, I can't see it being more perfect. So the question is, is it going to be banned? Is it going to be copied? Or is it going to be hacked? Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. Michael Saylor, the founder and CEO of MicroStrategy and a leading Bitcoin investor and advocate. Michael Saylor will share his insights on Could Bitcoin collapse? Is Bitcoin the perfect form of money? What are the threats to Bitcoin? How does Bitcoin compare to other cryptocurrencies? What is the future of Bitcoin? Let's join Michael Saylor in this interview about these topics and more. You know, you start as the denier. It's, a, it's not a good thing. And then you go to skeptic. Skeptic is it's too good to be true. So when I got to my skeptical phrase, I just, phase, I just asked, will it be banned? Will it be copied? Will it be hacked? And I stared at it, and the conclusion was, it's only if it's understood to be property, not currency, then no, it's not going to be banned in a country that gives you property rights, which means it's banned in Cuba, it's banned in North Korea. If the world becomes communist and they deprive you of the ability to own things, that's an existential risk. But that's not a problem in Russia or China or the U.S. right now. So not banned. Will it be copied it was copied 10,000 times. They all failed. This is, this is the winner of the 10,000 experiments. So, not, so yeah, it, it worked. And now, will it be hacked? And Satoshi's got $50, 60000000000 billion in a wallet out there. Then that's the reward for hacking it. No one's figured out how to get the money yet. So it hasn't been hacked. And I know, I know it's, it's able to store $60 billion without anybody hitting it. So what I think is I think the way to understand Bitcoin is, <clears throat> is everything you learned in economics and about money in your entire life was pseudoscience, you know, and superstitious. And, and you can't blame the economists for being mired in pseudoscience and superstition because we never had, we never discovered perfect money. And so Bitcoin is the first time that we actually discovered a thermodynamically sound, mathematically sound economic protocol in the history of the world. So I think we will date things before Satoshi and after Satoshi. And I think that you can't think of it as a network you, or as a product. You have to look at it as a protocol the human race discovered, like base 10 math, massive protocol like the metric systems, a protocol, like English is a protocol. And, and so this is the first sound protocol, economic protocol in the history of the world. Now we finally realize why seashells and bales of tobacco and fiat currency and gold coins and silver coins and copper tokens and glass beads and the giant stone coin and the yap people. We, <laughs> feel, we understand why that stuff never worked. Now you know. If you really understand Bitcoin, it's because I've got an asset where the energy has a half-life of forever, and the half-life of energy in gold is 30 years, and the half-life of your money or your energy in the dollar is 10 years, and the half-life of your energy in the bolivar is one year. And now once you understand that basic breakthrough, now the light bulb goes off. So I think all the smart money, all the... All the smart people in the world that don't trust the bank, don't trust the currency, want to keep their money, they're all discovering Bitcoin. It's like all the smart people decided to use math 
and use this language. And now what happens in the future? Well, stuff will advance, but you've, you're going to have a trillion, then a 10 trillion, then a hundred trillion dollar network. And if someone comes up with a new crypto algorithm and is better, we're just going to fold it into this network. And if someone comes up with, uh, with another twist or tweak, we're going to fold it in the network. You're not going to, it's like saying, everybody uses English in the world of science and trade today, but, I, but English doesn't have a word for my widget. So I think we should all switch to Swahili because they've got the word. And my answer is, I think we're just going to put the word into English and we're going to stick with English. <laughs> so Bitcoin is a protocol. It's going to go on a long, long, long time. And I think that as long as the world doesn't plunge into some Orwellian, no property rights situation, I think we're good. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink recently shared his positive views on Bitcoin praising the performance of the company's Bitcoin ETF, IBIT. The assets of IBIT have risen to $17.1 billion in Bitcoin, reflecting the increasing interest in cryptocurrencies as a profitable investment. The upcoming Bitcoin halving in April is expected to boost Bitcoin's value, attracting investors looking for long-term growth. Bitcoin halving events have historically led to price increases, benefiting not just Bitcoin, but also altcoins like Solana and Shabbat Inu. Cardano and Ethereum aren't stable coins. They're, they're crypto tokens, you know, which are probably unregistered securities. And so Cardano has been designated as an unregistered security by the SEC explicitly in lawsuits. Ethereum is this massive gray zone. So uh, at the end of the day, Bitcoin is the only, the only thing in the world universally acknowledged by every rational, intelligent person is Bitcoin is a commodity. Everything else you're going to see people disagree on and fight over and litigate politically, and there's a war that will go on. And so what I think is there's 10,000 things that people are going to fight over. There's one thing that it, that is institutional adoption. It's queer. So uh, it's, it's like asking me, which of the 10,000 mobile apps would I suggest I should invest in? My answer is, None of them, because there's a 99% failure rate in startups. So I'm not going to recommend you invest in a company. Which of 10,000 buildings should you buy? I don't know. Which of 10,000 pieces of art should you buy? I don't know. I mean, that's your business, right? If you want to do that, you do that. The only thing that I'm here to say is Bitcoin is a digital commodity. If you want global money, then it has to be a commodity. It cannot be a security. Right? I'm not going to tell you to buy Apple stock. Apple stock will not be a store of value in China in 100 years. Right? I mean, even Tim Cook would tell you that. So, so the world is very complicated when you get into securities and, and other types of investments. The idea of Bitcoin is what if we had a global money that was based on a crypto network that's decentralized and ethical? Goldman Sachs, a leading investment bank, has reported a rise in crypto activity among its top hedge fund clients. This increase follows the approval of Bitcoin ETF and a recovery in Bitcoin prices. Max Minton, Goldman's head of digital assets in Asia Pacific, says the ETF approvals have reignited interest in crypto among their clients. The U.S. spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, ETF, experienced their first positive inflows, breaking a streak of five consecutive days of outflows, totaling $887.6 million. The momentum continued into Tuesday, with the ETF amassing $418 million in inflows, building on the $15.4 million gained the previous day. Bitcoin miner Badir is reportedly in discussions with private credit firms to secure $100 million in funding to expand its mining capacity. It is believed that the cryptocurrency miner has engaged a financial advisor to assist with the negotiations. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.